for tables, um, the tag to use for table would is, it's not even would be, is table, simply table. So table inside your table, the next thing that you're going to nest another tag and the tag you're going to nest inside it is TR. So TR represents table row, the table row. Um, okay. Okay, the table row. So I think let me visualize what a table looks like so that you could see what we're talking about. So let's just say table image, table images, um, Excel table. Let's just say Excel. So let's be clear Excel table images. So if we pick this, okay, good. Let's use this one. Uh, oh, this is small. I want something um, larger. Okay, this. Okay, we could use this. This uh, right now. I just want the image. Eh. Okay. Now, if we look at this image, you could see there is a header and there is the body. Yeah. So you could see now this represents the table head. And this is like body. However, they are in rows. You can see it's a row, it's a row, it's a row, it's a row. Now, that's what we refer to when we say table row, which is the next thing we're going to do. So let's, yeah. So let's imagine we wanted to do something like this. Let's just say symbol or symbol and series. So what we would do is we'll say table and then we'll say tr which stands for table row so tr so we want to create a new row that's essentially what we're trying to say then we're going to say th which stands for table head then we're going to say symbol and then we'll duplicate this put another one and then we'll say series so i save let's open it in the browser and then tables so as you can see symbol is close to series right yep, yep, yep. No. okay next is of course this you want to put tata seal eq you know those round and things so we create another row so now we're creating another row. We want it to be on another row. Then we put table data, TD. So we set the first, so remember, okay, let's put, let's just call this, because I don't know. Let's just say a fill. I don't know what that is. And then, now, this would match this. It's in the same area, sort of. So as you can see, this is the first, it will be directly under the first. So let's let's see that. So if you go, you can see I feel it's under. So if we put another one, I will say this to be oops, sorry, T D. Not technical drawing, table data. Um so we see zero one one five five whatever, whatever. See with so you can see now this is under this. So if you want to create another row again, you apply the same thing. So you say copy, let's just paste it. So now if you call this one champion, um, you see now champion is directly this. I like that. So you get the gist of what is happening. That's how you create a table that's how you essentially create a table. For now, uh, it looks bland, but uh, when we get to CSS, we'll use CSS to style it so that it has all the, you know, the lines around it and whatnot. But essentially, this is what a table would look like. There are other properties like table body, table footer, caption, and things like that. But that is us going in depth into 
what we're working with but we want to keep things really simple but with this you should be able to create a basic table and when it's time for styling when we get to css we will be able to style it so yeah that is for tables and yeah so the next thing we will talk about would be forms and imputes forms and imputes yeah so let's get into forms and imputes shall we now for forms what we're going to do is very simple forms starts with tag form as you can see here so form this tag is very very important because it comes with certain things that the browser is looking for that you would need when you're dealing with forms and we will see what you will see what i mean in uh, as we go along for forms the first thing we want to do is let's create a label so we say a label so what does label look like so let's go to dribble.com dribble.com and then it's three b's so we go to dribble.com and then let's just search for let's just search for a form is it basic basic this nope Let's say registration form. So registration form, let's look at one simple one. Okay, let's look at this one. So if you look at this, you could see, if I zoom in, you could see there is first name, last name, email, password, password confirmation, um, then the checkbox. Now, these are usually what you see when you want to make use of a form. So these things are labels. These are labels. So if we put their first name and then you, yeah, so if you put that and if we refresh, okay, resume in. That's it. So first name, it just looks like a text, but you'll see the power of a label soon. So next thing you want to talk about, what we want to talk about next, next is input. So now if you do input like this, the default is a text input. And it simply looks like this. It looks like a text where you type in something. Yeah. Now, for input text, we have um, we have different types. So we have the type that is, so if you don't want it to be text, so if you want it to be text, which is the default, you don't have to type that, that's it. Or if you just want to type that so that some knows what you are doing. Then we have um, number. So number, what is expected is a number. You, you're not expected to type in text inside. Then there are other types. You can see there is, if you look at it, you can see there is the button type, there's a checkbox type, there's color, there's email, there's file. For password, when you look at password, password just lets you type so you can see. It doesn't show the details of what is inside it. Yeah, so that's for password. Now, another one, we could, another attribute we could, uh, let's just even look at, or that, let's just take it back to text. Let's just take it back to text. So for text, let's put an attribute inside this label. But first, we would give this input an ID. This is very important. This attribute called ID is one of the global attributes, but it's we could use, but it's very, very important. You'll see why, especially when you get to CSS. Now, let's give this ID, let's just say, First, let's just say name or something like that. Let's like first name. let's just say name. The ID is name. Now, if we go back, usually for some reason, it's not it's not all the time that this is here. It could be on top, whatnot. But if we click on first, nothing happens here. Sometimes you just want users to easily navigate your site. You don't want a situation they have to click in here 
before something happens. So if you click in here, you expect that this would automatically come into focus. Uh -huh. Now, what? how can we make that happen? Here we see four. And we give it the same name. Okay, let me, let's 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 not make it mean. Let's give let's say banana. Uh -huh. So you right, so I want you to know that this can change. You could, you could call it whatever you want. So banana. So so four. So put four banana. So let this and this be the same. All right. Now if you refresh and I click on this, you can see this comes into focus. Let me do that again. I'm clicking on this. See, that comes into focus. Now that's what, um, if you want a feature like that, that's how to go about it, you know. Let's duplicate this, let's make more of this. Oops, 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 I'm gonna copy and paste. And then I'll say this and let's just, let's say last name. And let's just call this last, and call this last two. Okay. And one attribute we could put here is called autofocus. So whenever the page um, is whenever this page is shown, what you want you want it to automatically come into here. So now if I refresh, you can see nothing is in autofocus. But the moment I say give this autofocus and then I save. If I refresh, immediately this comes into focus. This comes into focus. So that's one attribute that I think is very useful, especially when you want someone to you users users want to be easily taken through your page. So you don't want them to always keep clicking uh, or tapping through. You just when you use autofocus, you know, it just takes them straight to what you need, what's where you want them to type. Uh -huh. So yeah, that's for autofocus. Now, another attribute that I would love to talk about is placeholder attribute. So now this is getting clumsy. Let's and uh, and um, yeah, no more. Okay, so let's talk about the placeholder. So placeholder. Uh, let's just say type here. We we'll put anything here. Type here. Dot, 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 dot. I'm sure you see that a lot. Or type your name here. Your first. Uh, just type your name here. All right. So now you can see. Type your name here. So it's a placeholder. There's really no value here, but it's kind. We use it to kind of indicate to the user. On what they should do is used to tell the user what to do and so once you start typing in it it goes away so go race so you see it goes away race. All right. now let's talk about another attribute it's called value it looks similar to placeholder but they are different because they serve different purposes so value now let's put the value for this to be bankoli if i refresh you can see bankoli is written here now the difference between this and this is that this is a placeholder immediately i start typing it goes away so the whatever i type is whatever I, I put in this type your name here is replaced by the value of whatever i type so um race you see it's replaced however with value the text is already pre-placed for us the value is pre-placed for us. Like, so now when I start typing, it's kind of already there for us. So it's pre-placed for us. Whatever the text that is inside is pre-placed. It's placed there 
for the user or for yeah so you don't the user does not need to now manually type it then if they want to remove it they can and they want to put a new thing they can too but that is put there is pre-placed i don't know that's <laughs> pre-placed for us okay so and that's for value now let's create a button so remember input also has a type button but let's just let me just introduce you to another html type it's called a button so now and we will say submit or next now if we refresh let's take a look at what happens when i click on submit Oh, okay, yeah, let's take a look at what happens. So you could see it, the, you see there was a kind of refresh that took place and then it tried to submit. And as you can see here, there's like a question mark. Uh, you usually don't want that to happen. So to prevent that from happening, what do you do is you could indicate here as a type, uh, make a button. So, oops, I yeah, then refresh and submit. You see, nothing is ha happening. It's just a button. Now, let's even just imagine that we removed this type button and we want these fields, this input to be typed in. You want the user to type in something before you click on the submit button. What you add is the attribute called required. So, if you make this required, let's just make the first one required, very fresh. If we hit on submit, you could see it brings out this and tells you to fill. Please fill this field. So it's required. So that's one important, that's one way you could validate, would I call you validate your form here? Yeah? That's one way to ensure that a user doesn't send something that is empty to the backend. So that's required. Now let's talk about other imputes um, before we move on. One impute I would love to talk about first is the radio impute. Let's talk about the radio impute. So we say impute, then we, of course, it's self closing. The type is radio. So what does the radio button look like? Um, let's give it a value so that we okay, we, do it. we don't need to give it a value actually so then let's just leave it without the value so of course sorry excuse me now as you can see this is what it looks like it looks like you know I'm sure you're familiar with this if you click on it it becomes blue yeah now Let's create more. Um, let's even give it, you know, let's give it labels too. And um, we'll just say um, 10 to 20. You know, usually these labels are used for ranges, you know, 10 to 20. Let's just say 10 to 20. Let's just say 10 to 20. I'll duplicate this, copy, paste. Uh, 20 to 30, you know, like that. Let me, let me do ID um, first. I said ID, sorry, this is always before. And then copy, paste. Then this will be ID. And then we'll say four. And we'll say second. Very, very innovative names. <laughs> an ID. All right. So now this is what it looks like. So 10 and 20. Now, there is an issue with this. Usually whenever we see something like this, it's like they tell you pick your age. You cannot be 10 to 20 and also be 20 to 30. You have to pick one. You have to pick one. Now, how do we allow that to happen? How should we make that happen? It's simple. 
all you have to do is give the radio buttons that are associated with each other the same name so name is equal to let's say ages and then we come here copy we paste save and then we refresh and then you see if we click on this it clicks when we come here it moves we come here it clicks and here it moves yay so that's a way to go about it yeah so that's a very 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 beautiful way to go about it so that you you choose only one the next input I would love to talk about is the checkbox the checkbox is very important too the checkbox looks similar to the so let's just let me duplicate let me just duplicate this so I'll put a break so that uh, in a two breaks so that it's then I'll change this to third and this is third then the option uh, say command Oh, I really don't have to do that. Um, okay, so this is fourth. Let's copy and paste it. Okay, so so now that's that. So instead of radio, let's change this to checkbox. So let me just make this redix for us. Yeah, checkbox. Same thing with this checkbox. Good. So if we refresh, it looks like a checkbox, right? Now. Checkboxes are different from radio buttons because you know checkboxes are usually uh, usually allows you to pick multiple options. So you see things like um, what are the emotions you are feeling right now. As you know, usually when you are feeling surveys, you see things like that, and then you pick as many things would apply to you at that moment. That's what a checkbox is for, essentially. So now. If you want this to be checked by default, if you want it to be checked by default, so you put checked. No, that's checked. It's checked. Then you refresh, you can see this is checked by default. This is checked by default. The same thing, you could do that for to read any radio button you would like to. Let's put that to the chair. And you refresh and you can see this is checked by default so anyone you want checked by default is you put in checks there so that's about radio buttons that I would like to talk about so um, with that we come to the end of the HTML leg of this cause this beautiful cause um i hope you enjoyed it so far um i hope it was engaging enough i hope you've learned a lot of things and the next thing we would talk on next is css see you there